Welcome back. In keeping with our theme, so it seems, of grief to good, taking your grief and turning it to do good in the world, our next guests are their own form of dynamic duo who are, in fact, exposing the superhero in all of us. And I don't think this was originally somebody's grand plan, but it certainly has shown up in a very big way. Catherine Schuler is the creative director of Cosmoda, which is Cosplay Runway. So if you've never heard of it, imagine if Comic-Con and Fashion Week had a baby. So just to give you some idea of where we are. And Dan Hort is the CEO of Onomatopoeia Arts. I'm so proud of myself for being able to even say that. And Cosmoda, the cosplay runway. Catherine is an image and fashion and style expert. She is a former plus size model and an inclusivity icon and pioneer. Catherine and I have known each other since Oh, a long time. <laughs> and watching Catherine's trajectory in the world has been nothing other than remarkable. So the opportunity to share her here with you is my sincere, sincere pleasure. In 1996, uh, Catherine's husband, Mark Grunwald, had a fatal heart attack. He was 43. And at the time, Mark was Marvel Comics executive editor, best known for creating the official handbook of the Marvel Universe and his 10 year stint as the writer of Captain America. So some of you may very well know his name. He was also well known for his work on the Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, Spider Woman, What If. If you're a comics follower, you would know all these names. And if you're not, you know them from the current movies that Marvel has reintroduced and brought back to life. Catherine has always been a natural champion of people and causes. So when Mark died, she was looking for a way to take her grief and turn it to good. And Mark's purpose with all his characters was to always achieve the highest good for all. And Catherine's purpose to keep Mark's memory and the powers of Captain America operating in the hearts and minds of all of us brought her to team up with Dan Hort. And Dan is a super fan and also has um, created with Catherine Cosmoda, the cosplay runway, which is a fashion show featuring costuming, cosplay, and more. So it is my Genuine, genuine honor to introduce you to Catherine and Dan. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. It's so <laughs> yeah. fun, first of all, to share my friends and loved ones with my audience. But, you know, people who are doing crazy great things in the world, that's our reason for being. So, yeah. Kat, start us out and tell us how, you know, how this came to be. Well, I, you know, being married to a comic book guy till death do you part is not in the formula at all. I took that vow, but I, <laughs> it never really came to fruition. So I always was acutely aware of his significance, not only in the comic book world, but in the world in general, because of just the way he operated. He truly was Captain America. I was married to Captain America. So I know uh, integrity. I know a great heart. I know passion and drive and ambition and uh, greater good like no one else witnessed it. And, you know, just the way he uh, brought me into Marvel and engaged me was so tender because um, he wanted everybody to love Marvel as much as he did. He wanted to, everyone to be a part of his giant sandbox that he was playing in. And he was a giant, you know, he was a big kid. So I had, was doing fashion, which was my passion, and he was doing comics, which was his. And when we met, um, I was at an audition for She-Hulk because they went to the plus size agencies for big women. And they were, you know, casting for Comic-Cons, which, you know, before the days of cosplay, they actually had models dressed in costumes at the shows. So we just showed up for this go-see, um, but we weren't beefed up. 
like like She-Hulk was very beefed up. And so Mark realized that maybe the plus size agency wasn't the place to, to look for women. Maybe it was more uh, lights, camera, action, flex, and those kind of um, modeling agencies that dealt with more, um, you know, athletic uh, build women. So, but he did say to me that I would be good for the Enchantress. <laughs> I said, well, is that a comic book pickup line or what? You know, so we just kind of sat and talked and during the audition and he had a comedy group, I had a comedy group. And I thought there was so much in common, even though I wasn't um, a huge fan of comic books. Um, and, but I, I really appreciated his, uh, his, uh, his approach, you know, to, I mean, he was, he considered himself a comedian and so did I. So, you know, that was a good basic right there. So, you know, we kind of, um, I took his card and then, you know, we kind of kept in touch and, you know, we saw each other and, uh, you know, it was like, I really like this guy. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't think that there was any, um, uh, any kind of, uh, I don't know, um, a, a difference between us, between our professions. So I saw a huge um, overlap and Venn diagram to it. So, you know, that was, I mean, I only was, I only knew him for six years total. So we met in January of 91. We were engaged February of 92. We married in October of 92. And then he passed away in August of 96. So really, I mean, it was grew years. So you make your talk years and grew years. It was probably seven years for each day. I mean, we just jam-packed everything into our lives and got an apartment, got a house. We, um, you know, went to Comic Cons together and, you know, I, I just was creating um, as much as he was, you know, along the paths or equal paths. So he would come to my fashion shows and he would be writing and sketching all these new ideas for costume changes that he wanted to do for my fashion shows. So it was just a really great marriage. And Mark always said that a good marriage is great casting and we were perfectly cast. We were perfectly cast. And I just, I, I couldn't have been happier with a man who was making his, his profession, uh, his hobby, his profession, and then his profession, a career, and then his career, a whole calling for the world to be um, involved in the whole Marvel universe. So um, I'm just always aligned and people have been drawn to me who love that, love his work. And um, he always had me, I mean, he was a prankster. So when he first passed away, he had me put his ashes into a comic book. That's, he wanted that, it was in his will. And I said, oh, oh my God, of course a, a comic book guy wants to be thrown into his work. So, <laughs> so I had to make that happen with Marvel and they decided to do the graphic novel Squad and Supreme. So he, um, I drove up in those days, it was in Connecticut, the printing plant was in Connecticut. I drove up, I put his ashes into the ink and they printed the books um, and we did 5,000 copies of it. And it sold like hotcakes. So they said, you know, let's do another run. So I went out to the, to the warehouse and I was looking for his urn. I could not find his urn. And it was dark and it was late. And I was just like, I'm out of here. I can't do this. I don't think he wants to go and do another run. So, because I went back like a few weeks later and the urn was there. So he was hiding on me. I swear <laughs> he was hiding on me. He knew. And it probably, you know, fast forward to what we're, we're going to be doing with the ashograph because throwing your ashes into anything is now illegal. So, um, uh, you know, the, the fact is, is that everybody I've met along my journey, uh, the first, the first thing I did was start the, uh, Mark Rumold Foundation for the Arts at his alma mater. So we give away two scholarships a year. So the past 26 years, we've given, um, scholarships to students in, in the arts. So that's one way to pay it forward. Um, and, uh, Chuck Hoagland is the, was his, um, childhood friend, and he's the head of the theater department at his alma mater now. So it was an easy thing to instigate. And, you know, we just, I, I, I try to go out every year and do uh, the um, uh, designation for the award and, you know, shake the hands of the recipients. And they write me letters about how much it helped them. Uh, and, you know, I feel that that is a way to, I mean, I have never, I, I've never, I've 
I felt a lot of grief, but I didn't feel like I was alone because I was doing those kind of things that have made me proactive. I mean, everybody would understand if I sat in a room and uh, had to blubber and, 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 and feel sorry for myself, but that's not the, the way Mark would have wanted me to translate his life because he had a significant life. So he chose me for some reason to keep the legacy going and to keep that going. So when I meet people and he's got the best fans, just look at Dan Hort. I mean, I could not have a better partner in my life who appreciates Mark. You cannot, you cannot get into my life without appreciating my husband and not thinking that I'm some wacky widow and, uh, you know, get over it. You know, you don't marry a comic book guy like Mark and get over it. <laughs> it well, you matter. can't marry Captain America and get over anything. I mean, yeah. it, it is no. a lifetime calling and that's what you've right. done. So yeah. how has, how has this partnership between the two of you um, come together and helped you propel your whole mission? Well, I was in, uh, I was, you know, I'm always in the fashion world and I met some people who were in fashion and said, you should meet Dan because Dan has an interest in comics. So any, and he knows your husband. So that's all, always the key of him knowing my husband because an interest in comics is not enough. You have to know my husband's work. And Dan is a consummate um Markophile. He's a groomy file and he, he knows his work. And I simply don't, I, I, you know, I didn't read it as a teenager and have it part of my cellular level kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, development. And uh, someone like Dan, uh, who it resonates with him in his life, and he grew up with Mark, reading Mark, and took um, Mark's lessons that he embedded into his writing because he did not think it was just you know comic books and funny books and this was mythology these were archetypal characters that resonated with our lives and represented you know big concepts and big pictures and philosophies and um, all that he's like the buckminster fuller approach to, to comics almost so dan got it and he uh he you know, really fills in the gaps of the of the work that I don't know. I know the man. I can tell little anecdotal stories about him coming out and saying, I've done something no one's done in comics before. Uh, in front of the study every night he was writing. Um, but Dan knows, knows his work. And so that's the perfect marriage. But then what do you do? I mean, could we do panels on him? Yes. But then it was always like Mark's you know, telling me comics and fashion go together, comics and fashion go together. So we were thinking about how we could do, because I do event production, how we could do a production and how we could take those cosplay characters out of the lobby of the Javits Center and put them onto a runway in New York during Fashion Week. So that's kind of how we elevated it. And Mark always said to leave something better than you found it. So this is me leaving the comic book world and the fashion world different, changed, transformed somehow from how I found it. And so Dan is a perfect partner for me to make those dreams come true. And we have done three shows um, in New York City um, and uh, in other cities as well. We do comic cons, we do panels called What Grew New and You Should Too, because his nickname was Grew. So um, uh, I, I created this whole panel on his life and his contribution. And so Dan hosts that moderates it and I sit on the panel and tell the funny stories about Mark as a husband and a dad <laughs> and get everybody laughing about that but um, it's truly uh, Cosmoda is uh, there's no stopping it because uh, cosplay is actually more popular it's like a 440 billion dollar industry and Mark knew that he knew that that costumes and that taking on somebody else's identity was very, very key to getting inside your psyche and, and making your confidence and just at all kinds of things that, that it, 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 it feeds. So, um, so that's pretty much how we got together. And what we're doing now is Cosmoda and Cosplay Runway. So Dan, what about you? I know that, you know, from the printing side, 
there's there's a lot of business to be done there. But you are a comic book fan. You're a super fan, especially of Mark's work. So how does this feed into what you do and what you know and love about comics? Well, first of all, it's a lot of fun. That that's really the, the the best part about all of this, and has been really a pleasure. Um, not just working with Cat, but meeting all the fans. And you know, I've been incredibly blessed over the last several years to meet a lot of my childhood idols, a lot of these artists, a lot of these writers. And you know, that's just a thrill. That that's really just been a tremendously impactful thing in my life. It's been you know eye opening. And as we get out there and and meet more fans. You know, you really start to see that the power of fandom, as they call it. And that's something that Kat and I talk about quite a bit and we feel very strongly about. Um, you know, it's it's coming into its own, of course, is, is that it, it, it's it's really it's it's no longer for geeks, you know, that, that, that it's all in now, um, which is exciting and terrific and, and affords us a lot of opportunities to get out there and meet people. And if there's one thing I learned with all of this type of stuff, it's that, you know, that, that, that these po the power of fandom gives people the opportunity to connect, that it, it, it transcends all of the, the, the isms and gender and race and all the things that people like to talk about, that there is no shortage of fans of all stripes and that that's been incredibly rewarding. And is definitely something, you know, in terms of, of Mark's work with Captain America is something we talk about quite a bit. And I think we've incorporated it, if I do say so myself, really, really well, is that Captain America represented the American ideal, that he was interested in the things that, that America stands for more than any other kind of corporatism or patriotism or any of those kinds of things, that he was very interested in the people aspects of humanity and what America represents to the world in those ways. And I have to say, which, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I think Mark Gruenwald was one of the single most important people in making this transition from funny books, if you will, into something more ubiquitous, into real folklore and something that is incredibly lasting. One of the things I always, almost every panel we do, I always at some point like to remind people that for almost the entirety of his career, Stan Lee thought Marvel Comics was going to go out of business and that they would all be kind of laughed at for doing Spider-Man and for doing these kitty books. Now, in today's market, it's almost hard to imagine, really. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, that was the shroud which Mark worked under for most of the time that he was there. And it is very important and not understated, I think, to say that Mark was one of, if not the single most important person in making this transition from a venture that might have gone out of business and been forgotten into being what is now the MCU. And like I said, I, I think it's very clear to me. And I, again, I am a super fan. I did grow up with all this kind of stuff. I laugh, I can see and could show all sorts of examples of Mark's work where his relationship with Catherine is influenced. You can see the costuming, you can see in certain characters that he developed, you know, the sensibilities that are there. But I do not think it's understated to say that this guy was important for sure and maybe the most important because he was really the keeper of keys. Mark did the writing with his left hand Really and truly, Mark was was an editor and was a Marvel executive. That that's actually where his incredible influence can really be seen, because ultimately he was the the, the keeper of storyline. He was the keeper of continuity. You know, we talk about it a lot. Those, those the fans in the audience will know. Owen Wilson in the Loki series is playing Mark Gruenwald. And that character is supposed to be monitoring all the different universes and all the continuity and making sure that those things are straight. And it's really an important task. And it was one that Mark did exceptionally well. He started out as a, as a super fan also. His first real comic book project was a book called Omniverse, where they broke down all sorts of nerdy, heady, nerdy, you know, ideas about you know people's powers and breaking down the universes and and things that now again have become very important in the continuity of marvel 
and have become very important everywhere. It's not a stretch to say that these are important ideas in gaming, that all of this kind of stuff, these immersive universes where things track one another, that that was all Mark's contribution. And I believe from everything you've said, and, and I know this, obviously when it was strictly print, before internet, before social media, before people could actually connect with each other 24 seven, and they needed to have some place to connect, then the Comic-Cons brought them together and the Comic-Cons allowed for the shared understanding of fandom in its way. But like you, know, like you pointed out, Kat, now, you don't need to bring models in to be the characters on the floor. You've got the fans who are dressing up, who have adopted their own avatars, who have become their own characters in their way. And Mark was the linchpin in all of this by creating characters so deep that people wanted to be them, that people wanted to extend the character into a part of themselves and really elevate their own potential through these characters, which is genius. And the power of these comics can, can really not be understated. So I don't know who in our audience needs to hear this or who is now listening saying, oh my gosh, I had no idea all this was going on. So I need to go look for it. Where can they find more information on Cosmoda, on cosplay? Tell us where to go look. Well, you can go to our Instagram account, which is cosplay.runway. We're also right. found at www.cosplayrunway.com. Uh, we're going to be out in San Diego. We've got a panel. We've altered the name for a minute. We're now Mark Grunewald, a Hall of Fame career. And then we have our show on September 10th during New York Fashion Week. We'll be here in New York. Uh, and we've got a bunch of other stuff scheduled. So come and check it out. We encourage everyone to come in costume. So it's, <laughs> It's, it's a it's it's my grief to good. It tickles me no end to see people who are inspired by his work today, even 26 years later, um, how much he's influenced. And you know that I was probably the lucky widow because I had such a rich background to pull from, and his legacy is an easy one to keep alive. But. Um, you know, it just, it's my pleasure to do it and my honor to work with Dan and to meet all of his fans and to feed that incredible um, passion that he shared and just uh, get that out. They really get that. He well, really and I appreciate that at that audition, you may not have fit She-Hawk, but you know what? I Enchantress. You I was not totally became the Enchantress and you became Mark's Enchantress and he knew it. Yeah, and I dress as that for the Comic Con too. So, <laughs> thank you so much for being with us, and good luck with everything. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye.